Good morning. Welcome to St. John the Baptist Roman Catholic Church. We do want to briefly share the safety protocols established by the diocese. Everyone over the age of two is asked to please wear a mask throughout Mass. Please try to keep a six-foot distance between your family and other parishioners who may be sharing a pew. Please enjoy mingling and reconnecting with one another outdoors after Mass, remembering to maintain social distancing. Only one restroom is open and is reserved for urgent matters only. Foot traffic is to be through the Father Damasi Hall and not the sacristy. Weekly offertory collection baskets are at the exits of the church. The weekly bulletins will be available at the end of Mass in the bulletin racks. The communion procession will be single file, utilizing the floor markings, and will be assisted by the ushers. Please keep your mask on during communion. The host can only be received in the hand, not on the tongue. Lastly, when exiting your pew at the end of Mass, please leave the kneelers down so those pews can be sanitized before the next Mass. At this time, please stand and greet your fellow parishioners warmly with a nod or wave. And as we welcome each other back, once again, at St. John's Catholic family.
you who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that we may return to the right path. Give all who, for the faith we profess, are accounted Christian, the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ, and to strive after all that does the name honor. We pray for our Lord Jesus, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Such large crowd, large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat down, and the whole crowd stood along the shore. And he spoke to them a length at length in parable, saying, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground, where it had little soil. It sprang up at once because the soil was not deep, and then when the wind, when the sun rose, it rose, it scorched it. It was scorched, and it withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it. But some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit, a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The disciples approached him and said, Why do you speak to them in parables? He said to them in reply, Because knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven has been given has been granted to you, but to them it has not been granted. To anyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. For anyone who has not, even what he has will be taken away. This, this is why I speak to them in parables, because they look, but they do not see, and hear, but they do not listen or understand. Isaiah's prophecy is fulfilled in them, which says, You shall indeed hear, but understand. You shall indeed look, but never see. Gross is the heart of, these, of this people who will hardly hear with his ears. They have closed their eyes, lest they see with their ears and hear with their see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and be converted. And I heal them. But blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear. Amen, I say to you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, but, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Hear then the parable of the sower. The seed sown on the path is the one who hears the word of the kingdom without understanding it, and the evil one comes and steals away what was sown in his heart. Seed sown on the rocky ground is the one who hears the word and receives it at once with joy, but he has no roots and lasts only for a time. When some tribulation or persecution comes because of the word, he immediately falls away. The seed sown on the thorn is the one who hears the word, but then worldly anxieties and lures of the richer, riches, riches, riches choke the word. And it bears no fruit. But the seed sown on the rich soil is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields a hundred or sixty or thirty fold. Gospel.
simple and understandable. This is partly so because he was an artist in using parables and making his point. A third of Jesus' documented teachings and preachings in Scripture are done in parables. A third. And it's one of these most familiar parables that we hear about today's gospel. It's one that is so simple and yet so profound. In this parable of the sower, as Father said in his welcoming, by which this parable is often referred, Jesus is teaching this crowd by the seashore that it is up to each one of us individually when it comes to the extent that we will hear the word of God and follow it. One commentator suggests that instead of referring to this parable as the parable of the sower, instead it should be called the parable of the soil. Parable of the soil, for it is all about kind of the receptivity of the soil that drives this, the outcome of how the seed, how, how the seeds do. And Jesus paints a very verbal picture that his people can understand and relate to. Of course, he's speaking to a rural audience, many of whom are farmers and herders themselves. He speaks about the sower who is just generously throwing seeds to the wind, and the seeds fall on four kinds of soil, soil with very different characteristics. The first we hear fall on a road, on a path. The road is hard and it can be plowed. The seeds have no soil to sink into, so they lie on the top of the path and are snatched up by the birds. They never really have much of a chance sprout. The next seeds we hear fall on rocky soil. Much of Palestine is rocky and the top soil is very thin. So Jesus' listeners could easily relate to these conditions. Needless to say, the seeds have had little chance here to do well. Though they might take, have taken root right off the bat and sprouted and grown strong for a little while, but as soon as the harsher elements come, the hot sun, the little rain, the sprouts burn up and shrivel due to their shallow root systems. Thirdly, we hear about seeds that fall on the thorns. They root and grow, but as they mature, they are choked and crowded out. Here the soil is sufficient to support the seeds well, but the surrounding weeds begin to block the sun and compete the nutrients until the new plants die. And finally, we hear Jesus talk about a condition where the soil is rich and unencumbered by any other distractions, and the results are obvious. The seeds grow and prosper, yet curiously not all at the same rate. Some grow 30 times as much, some 60, and some 100. The message must have been as clear to Jesus' listeners as it seems to us today. But leaving nothing to chance, he goes on to interpret this parable, which is really the first time in recorded scripture that he provides an interpretation to any of the parables that he teaches. Yet before he does, he basically challenges his followers, and in turn, you and me, to listen intently find where we are in this metaphor. Quote, this is why I speak to them in parables, he tells his apostles, because they look, but they do not see, and hear, but they do not listen or understand, unquote. So it seems to me that the message of today's gospel clearly asks us which one of these conditions represent the state of our faith today. Where would we place ourselves in this celestial garden? As I've been reflecting on this challenging question and preparing this homily, I, especially as it relates to my own spiritual practices and journey, I've been thinking that at times in my life I have been in each one of these soil conditions. But in what condition do I find myself mostly? Is the question. In what condition do you find yourself mostly? 
But my guess is, you, we found ourselves in the hard trodden path. We probably wouldn't be sharing an hour of our Saturday or our Sunday with the Lord. We'd be out catching up on our summer chores or enjoying a barbecue or sleeping in or getting ready for our favorite summer activities. We wouldn't be at the Lord's table or taking the time to watch the video of the celebration from home. Because of minds hardened and packed tight like the trodden ground of this parable, these folks don't have a chance before the metaphorical birds of the world snatch up any germs of yeah. spirituality. But what about the seeds that fall on rocky soil where, these, where there is very little depth or richness to sustain us? Is the reverence that we have for God and His sacraments a little shallow, a little ruthless? Are we among the those fair weather cats, quote unquote, who practice our faith when convenient, but not when inconvenient or challenged? I think we have recently lost a lot of Catholics, a lot of Catholic sisters and brothers who fall into this category. We've lost them because of the sexual abuse scandal in the church. We've lost some because they don't agree with some of the moral or social positions that our church has taken. So they prefer to drop out rather than to speak up. We have lost some because they don't have no they don't like what their pastor says or does. Or perhaps a lay leader in the parish has offended them. There were fence sitters who were talking about their Catholic faith before the arrival of this coronavirus pandemic. The current conditions are perfect for supporting mediocre commitment to their faith. Explaining these followers, Jesus says, quote, when some tribulation or persecution comes up because of the word, he immediately falls away. Unquote. And what about the seed that is growing up among the thorns? Is our faith getting choked or squeezed out, choked by all the worldly distractions that we have to put up with day in and day out? Who can't relate to these conditions? Parents who have to work on weekends, individuals who struggle to nurture their faith, but who have no support or positive models around them, families who are involved in sports and other recreational activities that are forever encroaching on worship times. The list of this stuff that is choking people is endless. Multimedia distractions, pornography everywhere, materialism, commercialism that our country suffers from, a general erosion of moral values, there's much that is choking from, from choking us from hearing the word and following it. And yet, despite the pessimism of this parable so far, Jesus shares that some of the seeds do indeed find way, their way to good soil. Though it is only a portion, that those seeds do that are sown, it is still a story of hope and encouragement. Jesus knows that these are the ones who hear the word and understand it. These are they who take the word to heart, into their heart, where neither scorching sun or chilling wind or choking thorns can touch it. One doesn't have to have grown up on a farm to understand that Jesus' message today is all about receptivity. It's all about our openness, our willingness to hope to work and to be inconvenienced. And yes, maybe even to be ridiculed for our faith. It is not easy being Catholic today. Yet so many of us already know that it's worth it. It is worth the inconvenience. It is worth the struggle because the rewards are truly 30-fold for you, or 30, perhaps 60 maybe even a hundred. 
you have responded to the invitation of this divine soul. So may our prayer today be that we continue to take Christ's invitation to heart every day and strengthened by this resolve and growth, we are then able to share that faith with those around us. And despite the worldly thorns and distractions, may we pray to remain deeply rooted and steadfast steadfast in our spiritual growth. And we ask that the sustenance that we receive at this heavenly banquet continue to make our spiritual root system strong and our fruit awesome.
look upon the offerings of the church, O oh Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring even greater holiness. We pray through Christ the oh Lord.
whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand. Lead your people. Proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. And we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on this oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis our Pope and Christopher our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, our parish family, and the entire people who have made your own. Father, open our eyes to the needs of our sisters and brothers. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly, after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, so that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Father, remember our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ. And remember all of the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face in the resurrection. Give them the fullness of life. And grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we too may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, the apostles, the martyrs, and all of the saints, where we shall praise you and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever.
Let us call for you. Call to the supper of the Lamb. In the body and blood of Jesus, keep us safe.